Let's now explore how to solve this super cool hyperbola question from the Amy. And it looks so scary, it's hyperbola. Really, if we take a moment to think about what's going on, it's really not that complicated. So first thing, let's get rid of these denominators. It's annoying. So we get 6x squared minus 5y squared equal to 120. So when we plot this hyperbola, what will it look like? Well, roughly, it's good to know that the hyperbola will look something like this, but symmetric on both sides. And like it's fourfold symmetry, right? You have this because like this, 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 this. It's going to be symmetric because x and y negative. It's always going to be the same. Okay, so now we have we're placing a rhombus on this hyperbola, and we're asked to find basically the largest number less than b d squared for all rhombuses, basically the minimum value of b d squared, essentially, right? It's like a something that's it's going to be like an open interval. And then finding, okay, find this open interval lower bound. Even though it's technically not possible, it's basically the minimum is what we're trying to find here. So let's take a picture, let's take a moment to look at this rhombus. And this is kind of the key fact here. Diagonals intersect at the origin. So origin is, let's say, this big blue point. So let's say that's A, and then let's say D, the intersect of the origin. So D, let's say we have B here, and then B see here, the diagonals intersect at the origin. So what does that mean? Well, remember a rhombus always has perpendicular diagonals. So let's just say we call this point B. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's say this point B was x, y, right? Now, because it intersects at the origin, if we draw a line that goes from out from B and passes through the origin just by symmetry, we're going to get that this point is negative x, negative y. I don't know why that's so thick. Okay, so therefore, if the point x, you know what? I think it's better if we use different things, not x and y. So I'll just use a and b. So if a and b lies in the hyperbola, we know 6a squared minus 5b squared is 120. Now, the key thing here is this slope over here is b over a. So this slope over here is going to be negative a over b, right? Perpendiculars. So therefore, this point is going to be of the form. It's going to be, because the slope is negative a over b, it's going to be something like negative bk comma ak. And this point will be opposite, right? Like something like bk comma negative ak. Again, it has to be symmetric because it's, it passes through the origin and it's a rhombus, right? So it has to be symmetric. So now the question is, if bk, a case is also on the hyperbola, then we can write something like 6 bk squared minus 5 ak squared equals 120. And then we can just factor out, we get something like this equals 120 over k squared. Now the question is, k, this is like some weird thing, constant. We don't know what in the world that k is. And this problem is a little bit tricky because what do we do with k? That's kind of the tricky part. Many people maybe reached here and got stuck. The thing is, k can be anything. It could be anything. You can make it a million if we wanted to, theoretically. So the point is, when will this not have a solution? So let's just consider the value of 6ab squared minus 5a squared. Let's say it was equal to 1, something super duper tiny, 1. Now we can make k square root 120, which is, you know, approximately 11. And it would give a valid solution. We could solve for k. We would have a valid solution for k from the b and a values. So if, we had, if, if this was equal to 1, then k would have a solution. And there would be such a rhombus. What if it was equal to 0? then this is always going to be zero and that's not going to work very well 120 over k squared equals zero though that's not possible unless k is infinity and obviously you know we're not doing infinite stuff here so the idea here is even if it's like 0 0.00001 we can scale it by a large enough k such that we can find two points on this hyperbola that do work but zero is kind of like the cutoff point Anything even a little bit more than zero will give a valid solution. 
So that's why you have this kind of weird, strange wording. Find the largest number less than b squared for all rhombuses. So essentially just saying, okay, assuming this, this is kind of like the limit you can think about it as, for if you know like limits and stuff. It's like the limit, this is like the limit basically, the limit of, of this. So what's bd when this happens? Well, now we have two variables, two equations, simple enough to solve. We get 6b squared is 5a squared. So 6a squared is just going to be 36 over 5b squared. So we get 36 over 5b squared minus 5b squared equals 11 over 5b squared, which is 120. So b squared is squ uh, 600 over 11. And then a squared is just going to be 6 fifths of that, so 720 by 11. And then therefore, we have, okay, uh, I think I might have labeled this wrong, whoops. We're trying to find the maximum length or minimum length of BD squared. So what is BD squared? The distance, that's square root of 2A squared plus 2B squared, or nothing but 4 times the square root of A squared plus B squared. And guess what? We know A squared and B squared, so that's equal to 4 times square root of 1320 by 11, 4 times root 120. Oh, sorry, whoops, this should be a 2, not a 4, whoops. So now we have that this is equal to 2 times square root of A squared plus B squared, 2 times this, which is 2 root 120. And then now we're asked to find B squared, so this becomes, if we square this, we get 4 times 120, or 480. So 480 is our answer. So the key idea in this problem is don't get scared by the hyperbola. It's a hyperbola, but in reality, it's just an equation, and we can deal with equations. And I know some people have some solutions with asymptotes or something, but I don't... That definitely works, but I don't think it's necessary. You can just consider two points on this and realize that, okay, as, as oh, the limit goes, as the limit of k goes till infinity, and that's, I think, what they mean by the asymptote, you're going till infinity, you're approaching the asymptote, something like that, I think. Then, you know k goes really, really large, then bd is growing smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? You can, if you visualize this, like bd is small. Now, boom, we have something that's so large. So, therefore, that's, that's like a nice way to see that, okay, this, as when it's zero, then it's not possible, but anything even a little bit positive, we can scale it up by the appropriate k, and that's how we got our answer. I hope you enjoyed the solution.